Hey, what's up everyone? Tim Uchuk here. It's uh, late in the evening. I'm actually out running uh, errands for my wife. She's got to uh, she's got to bring cookies to one of our preschool parties tomorrow morning and I am going to the grocery store to fix them up because we've been slammed this week with all kinds of other stuff. So we're cheating a little bit tonight. Don't tell anyone. Um, but on the, uh, I've got like a 15 minute drive here and I wanted to share, um, I wanted to implant um, a way of thinking when it comes to your personal productivity and, and just how you manage your time, um, how you think about time. And I want to I want to go back and tell a couple of stories and I'm going to go back into my, my manufacturing days and bear with me if you're not in manufacturing. This is going to be, I think, a really useful thought exercise for you. Um, probably arguably more useful if you're not uh, involved in manufacturing, if you're involved in, you know, insurance or real estate or property management, or it doesn't really matter. Um, I want you to start thinking about time as a conveyor belt. So let's, let's break this down. Um, just to give you some backstory, this was in my, my late twenties. I was working with, um, at the time, a fellow from Toyota because I was trying to figure out we had a ton of demand for our product. We had to build a product, ton of demand, and we couldn't keep up. We had to really um, improve our efficiency so that we could meet the demand, right? And so we had to get like just really, really granular with every single action from the time that the customer placed the order to the time we delivered the order. So again, it, I, I like to think, you know, in terms of everything on your to-do list, in terms of everything, your your business, the transactions, your delivery of your product or service, um, your sales activity, your marketing activity, I think of all of those activities um, as being, they're, they're like on a conveyor belt between um, present moment and some moment in the future where you're gonna be delivering, when, when those things that need to be done get moved to done, that's you shipping the, the finished product. That's how I like to visualize it. Um, so. Getting back to this this story, um, for context, again, we were building truck bodies and we had to literally double um, production. So how did we do that without having to scale up all of our manpower? We actually, if you can picture it, we um, would draw a map on a piece of paper of the area, the cell where they were building and fabricating a, a section. And I would um, film it, so I would record it and we would, we would watch it and we would literally trace all of the steps that were taken from whoever's working. So we would, if he, he would start at um, at a spot and we would draw a line from that spot to the next spot to the next spot. And these lines are called the spaghetti diagram. And we would literally, every, every line represented waste, right? Every line represented waste. And the name of the game was to you know, if there's walking back and forth, back and forth, what are they getting and can we bring it closer? And this this spaghetti diagram, this waste, and there's tons of waste. I mean, this is a great physical example. But if, if you think about um, all of the like digital waste, um, the redundancies when you're printing, you know, things multiple times where you can get away with doing it once, um, where things um, start and stop where you take action and then you get roadblocked because people don't have enough information or you're waiting from um, an external source, something that's outside of the scope of your control. So if, if all these things um, that accumulate to you know running your business, if you picture them as, as being on a conveyor belt, that conveyor belt is the majority of the time stopped. It's not moving forward. It's getting roadblocked for whatever reason. And this Again, looking at the spaghetti diagram, um, circling back to this fellow I'd worked with um, from Toyota, uh, from prior to working with him, I was a much more, I think, patient person. And I just remember we were, we were looking, we were in a boardroom, we were looking at the spaghetti diagram, right? And we're looking at, oh my, oh my God, there's all this waste and what do we gotta do? And we were sitting in there talking about this and none of the workers were in the room with us. And he said, like point blank, why are we why are we in here talking about this? Looking at this piece of paper, the uh, the clock is ticking. You've got customers literally right now who are waiting, 
and we're sitting in here talking about doing. We're not doing anything. We're having a meeting and a meeting isn't doing anything and, it, and it's not creating any value. So we got up and we went out into the shop. We gathered the workers around and we huddled. We, we looked at and highlighted the areas that we could immediately take action. The clock was ticking, immediately take action, eliminate them. And we, we stopped for 30 minutes, rejigged everything, and then we hit go and it was done. Action, ready to rock. Now we're saving 10 minutes here, two minutes here, and it started to stack up and we kept doing this. But the point of the story is, is this, this, um, this thought in the back of your head of, of that conveyor belt and the clock not stopping and customers waiting for you to deliver value. And again, we're, we're talking about a manufacturing example here, but I literally think about this in any facet of your business where um, from the point that the customer sends the signal for whatever you're, you're delivering product or service, everything that's not creating value for the customer is waste. And it's, it's the, um, the practice that we're talking about is the systematic elimination of waste. And so this, um, this idea has just been like seared into my brain when I'm in my kitchen at home, I think about, you know, if I'm making a smoothie, I think about walking from one side of the kitchen to the other, um, getting the ingredients. If, if there's too much walking back and forth and, um, I, I have to stop then and there and move things closer and, and really it becomes a game in terms of how efficient um, you can make it and just keep chipping away at all that waste and, and just continuously improve and move the needle and make things more efficient. So this spaghetti diagram, the point um, just to circle back of this episode is to think of that that scenario that um, we're, we're building a product. In this case, it's a truck body, but in your business, it can be whatever you're delivering that's a value to your client. And picture all of the the back and forth, if you're on your computer, there might be back and forth and, and printing stuff out and, and searching. Um, and how much out of all of those activities is actually value added? And how much out of all those activities is waste where that conveyor belt is stopping? And when you think in these terms, um, the technical term in, in manufacturing is the value stream. Um, but just picture that conveyor belt and how often it is just stopped where you're just waiting. And when you, when you picture it that way, there is so much opportunity within your business to start just chipping away at all of these little inefficiencies. And the funny thing is, is when I first learned about this kind of stuff where we talked about, you know, leaning out an organization and, and making it really, really efficient, our employees were scared because they thought it meant um, we're going to start laying people off and making things super lean, cut out all the fat. And really what I found was that the opposite is true. It was the systematic elimination of waste by making their jobs easier. So less walking, less um, struggle, less redundancy, eliminating non-value added activities made their work actually easier. And they got more engaged. They spent more of their time solving problems and it became like a game. Uh, so just, I thought I would share that that little snippet, that little piece from from my my history, my past. And how it's really, um, it's something that I apply to, you know, one of the, the things that I teach, which is called the productivity funnel. It's really that. It's it's the gamifying essentially all that stuff that needs to be done. And how can we optimize that conveyor belt so that you're shipping, you know, your present self is shipping the highest value tasks to your future self, right? So when you're organizing your your tasks for the week or for the day, you are organizing them in such a way that those things are going to move forward. The conveyor belt is not going to stop and you're prioritizing by the highest value um, items and tasks first in, in priority of, you know, bang for your buck. And the customer in that scenario, when, when it comes to your productivity, is future you, right? So present you is, is delivering gifts to future you by, by doing this and by setting up your day and your week in this way where you've got that conveyor belt that's just moving things forward. And of course, we can we can continue to to improve on this um, analogy, this 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 scenario, by you know delegating and standardizing and automating, and and that's where it starts to get fun, where it becomes a game. How much stuff can we really crank out this conveyor belt on a daily and, and weekly basis? So it starts to become fun.
but I just wanted to um, share that spaghetti diagram, um, that visual with you so that, that you can kind of apply that in your business and in your industry. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in manufacturing, um, it's just as useful because really it's all about um, eliminating waste and focusing on um, the value added activities, the stuff that if, you're, if your customers or clients were following you around with a one of those reality show cameras, what are the things that you do throughout the day that they'd be willing to pay you for? In other words, the value added stuff and what's all the stuff that's just waste. It's not adding any value to your clients. And that's, that's the name of the game. So anyways, hope that was useful. I'm at the uh, grocery store here and I will catch up with you later. You know, when I look around at all the entrepreneurs who are grinding it out, spending 70 to 80 hours per week growing their business, you have to ask yourself the question, at what cost? Hi, my name is Tim Uchuk, and in this podcast, we're going to be exploring the tools, tactics, and strategies for crushing it and scaling your business without making the ultimate sacrifice of your time and freedom. 